Hello everyone and welcome. I have 16 Valentine DIY crafts for you today. In today's crafting adventure I have pulled together several favorite Valentine's Day crafts for you. This is a great way to get you stimulated and ready for crafting for Valentine's Day. Let's go ahead and get started and let me share with you 16 Valentine's Day DIYs. To get started on our first craft, you're going to need some wood letters and you want to spell out the word love and then you also need XOXO. Do you want those? Then you're going to want to paint those red. I'm going to be using the Apple Barrel. Cardinal Crimson. I really like this color red. It is a true red and it has a blue base. Go through and get a good one or two coats onto your letters until you get the color tone that you want. Make sure to get all the little edges on your letters. I have all of my letters painted and while they're drying we're going to move on. You're also going to need four of the little wood blocks that you can get in the crafter square section. These are 2.5 inch in diameter. If you're unable to find the wood blocks over in the uh, toy section they also have foam dice that are about the same size. You can use those. Uh, what you'll need to do if you're going to use the foam dice is you want to go over it with a coat of Mod Podge and let it fully dry before you paint it. That will help the paint to stick and it'll also help it not crack after it dries. But today I'm going to be using the wood blocks you'll need four. And I'm going to give them a base coat of white paint. It'll take one to two coats depending on what paint that you use. Go ahead and get one to two good coats of white paint onto your four blocks. Let them dry and then when we come back we'll add some distressing to the blocks. All my letters are dry and so are my blocks, so I'm now going in and adding some distressing. And that's really easy. I'm just using some Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel and some khaki. You just need a very small amount. And on my blocks I did not paint the bottom. So you just need a rough brush, something uh, where the bristles are kind of messed up makes it better. Dab in, then dab off any excess. You want to go in the same direction and then just lightly go over your blocks. So on the sides, you want to make sure that you're going in the same direction all the way around so that it looks cohesive. And you start with the lighter color, the khaki. Just go through and add in as much or as little as you like. Once the sides are done, I set it down and then I go through and do the top. And don't worry, if you get too much on and you don't like it, very simple. Just take the same white that you did the base on, put a little bit out, dab into that, take off any excess and then go over it. That will help lighten up anything that you got too dark. Once you have your light color on, then you can go back in with the burnt umber and go over it the same way. And I just go quickly to get my color on there and not too much. And then the last is the top. Okay, once you get your distressing done, go ahead and let those dry and then we will move forward. Everything is nice and dry. So go ahead and line up your four blocks. Then you want to turn them to the side. So the bottom is here. And now we're going to go ahead and start to glue on our little letters here. And on this side I'm going to spell love. Half 
How I'm going to glue these down is a mixture of the super glue, wood glue, and hot glue. And I'm just going to eye them. I'm just going to put a small amount, a little dab here and there, and then the same with the hot glue. You know, the hot glue will give you that instant hold, and then the wood glue will give you that long-term hold. And then just eye it and place your letters. I have my love glued on on this side. Now you want to keep it just like that. You want to take it and flip it over. And then on the back, we're going to do XOXO. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and glue those down. I have everything attached. I have love on this side. And on the back side, I have XOXO. Now this is really nice. You can put it on a counter. You can put it on a mantle. You can put it on a side table. On your kitchen island, you can spread them out. You can stack them. So you can arrange them in whichever way you want to display them. And then you can always change it up. Do you love one year and then the XOXO the next year? And I thought that was such a fun and easy craft, something perfect for Valentine's Day. To get started on our next project, you're going to need one of these DIY craft kits that you can get from Dollar Tree. They have a couple different ones to choose from. They have a wood cutout and then they also have a bunch of sequins and little rhinestones and some ribbon. This one says love. They also have this one that's the little truck. It has some hearts and it says the word love. The one that I'm going to use today is this one that is XOXO. And I'm pretty much just going to be using the wood cutout. So I'm going to save the other goodies in there for another project. But you can use whichever one that you like or whichever one you can find. So I want to get a good coat of paint on this and I'm going to do a gold color and I'm using the Folk Art Metallic Pure Gold. Now depending on what paint you use, you can use spray paint or you can use regular paint, whichever works best for you. You'll need to put one to two coats on depending on the paint. I got two coats of gold onto my XOXO, and then I decided to also paint one of these small uh, heart DIY stickers gold as well. So I'm going to let these dry, and while they dry, we're going to go ahead and move forward. You also need a wood cutout of the heart. You can get this in the regular craft section at Dollar Tree. And then you'll also need a piece of decorative paper. You can choose whichever you like. I like this one. I pulled it out of one of the old paper books that I have that I picked up at Michael's. You can get decorative paper at Michael's or at Hobby Lobby, usually for a dollar or less per sheet. Sometimes you can get four for a dollar. Turn it over, lay your heart down, trace it out, and then go ahead and cut it out. There you go. Just double check and make sure that it's going to fit over your piece of wood. If it's not absolutely perfect, that's okay. We can fix it after we get it glued down just by sanding around the edge. That'll give it a really nice clean edge. Now to attach this to the wood, you can use several different uh, types of glue. You can use Mod Podge. You can use Elmer's glue, you can use a glue stick. Today I'm going to use uh, Aileen's Original Tacky Glue. And there you go. 
Now that my paper's on, I'm going to go around the edges here and clean it up. You just need some sandpaper and you want to go down and away. This will remove any excess paper that you have. See, it'll take off any excess paper. And this paper is pretty thick, so just going down like this usually doesn't get it all off. Once you get it down, then I just kind of rub back and forth around the edge, and that'll take care of the rest. I got all my edges sanded down. I have a nice clean finish, so I'm ready to move forward. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue my XO, XO onto the top here. I want it down just a little bit. I don't want it perfectly centered because I'm going to be putting a bow up here. So about there. And to attach it, I'm going to use a combination of the Aileen's Original Tacky Glue and Hot Glue. And there you go. Now we're going to work on the bow and I pulled this really pretty satin gold ribbon out. I picked it up in the floral garden section. It is three yards by five eighths of an inch. I want to make a bow to go right up here at the top. So decide how big you want your loop. So it looks like I'm going to do about a three inch loop and just fold it over itself like that. Okay, once you got your first two loops, go ahead and trim. Flip it so it stays where I need it. And then I'm going to do two more loops that are slightly smaller. And you put one on top of the other. So the one on top should be slightly smaller than the one on the bottom. You're going to want to cut another piece of ribbon approximately eight inches for the tails. Place that on the bottom in the back. Make sure it's in the center. And take your pipe cleaner, put it in the center here. Pull it to the back. And then put it on your table and push down so it's flat where the pipe cleaner is. You can pull down your tails. Separate your loop. Pull the smaller one up and the larger one down just a little bit. Okay, and then go ahead and trim your tails. On the smaller ribbon, I prefer just to cut it at an angle, but if you want to dovetail them, go right ahead, whichever you prefer. Once you have your bow together, you can go ahead and place it. I'm going to place mine right here at the top and I'm just going to hot glue it down. And then I'm going to take my little gold heart DIY sticker that I painted and I'm going to put that right in the center. And there you go. Doesn't that look adorable? Now you can use this on a wreath or you can use this as a wall decor. I'm going to be using it as wall decor. So I'm going to go ahead and add some jute cord to the back here.
And there you go. Quick and easy wall decor for Valentine's Day. For our next Valentine's DIY, you're going to need a package of the Color Your Own ornaments. They have several different ones to choose from. This is the one that I chose. I think it is absolutely adorable. Very, very pretty. To paint these, you're going to need white. I'm going to be using the Apple Barrel White, and you'll also need a red. I'm going to be using the Folk Art Lipstick Red. Now I went ahead and put some out here on my palette. You'll want to paint your hearts here in the middle first. We're going to paint those red. And they may look difficult to paint, but they're not. The only place that you need to be careful is where they meet the outside part show you here as I paint. But just get a good coat with this uh, lipstick red. Uh, one coat is insufficient. It gives me a nice good coat. But like here where the heart meets, the small heart meets the outside heart, that's just where you need to be careful. And don't worry if you mess up a little bit with the red paint, that's okay. Because when the red paint is dry, we're going to go back and paint around the outside and at that time if you made any kind of a little mess we can clean that up no biggie that's one good thing about paint it's very forgiving if you mess up just let it dry paint over it and start again Once you get your red hearts there in the center painted, go ahead and set it aside. You want to let that dry before you move to the next step. Once your red hearts are dry, then you can go ahead with your white paint and paint around the outside. This is where if you made any kind of a little boo-boo, you can fix it up. Again, you just need to be cautious where the two meet. Of course, you can use any color combination you would like. If you want to do pink instead of white, you can do that. If you want to keep it a little bit more neutral, you could always paint maybe the hearts white and then use like a <laughs> brown stain around the outside. That would be really pretty if you like farmhouse. So you can customize this with your paint however you like to fit your home. And there you go. Doesn't that look adorable? I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of my little hearts painted. Uh, this package came with eight, but I'm only going to be using five. All of my hearts are painted and dried. I did decide to go ahead and paint six small of the DIY stickers. They come in a package like this, and I used the small blank hearts. I had six of them, plus a couple more. I just painted them the same red color as I did on the ornaments. The ornaments do come with a twine to hang it. Just want to tie a knot and tie the string to the center. Just like that. This is what we're going to use to attach it to the main cord for the garland. Okay, these are done and ready to go. You can go ahead and set these aside. You will need three ribbons for Valentine's Day, whichever three you like. These are the three that I chose. I picked up all of these from Dollar Tree. These are all 5 eighths of an inch by three yards. You'll want to cut each of your pieces at 12 inches and you'll need one of each. 
And then you'll also need two small pieces of jute cord and one of the red hearts, the little red heart DIY stickers. Now you can layer your ribbons however you'd like. Just place one on top of the other and then you want to bring the ends, all the ends together so that you can find the center. Here at the center, take one of the small jute cords and tie it off. Okay, you want to leave those ends. That's what you're going to use to tie it on to the garland. And the second piece, you want to come down about a half inch, three fourths of an inch, and go ahead and tie it again. You're tying all of the ribbon together down about an inch. So that's what it should look like. You have one tied at the top. This is what you're going to use to attach it to your garland. And then you have one down anywhere from say half inch to an inch and tie. Then you're going to take your little red heart and you're going to glue it right at the top there just like that. So go ahead and put your hot glue onto your jute cord there. And then you have all these pretty ribbons hanging down from your pretty little heart. You will need to make six of these. I have all my ribbons and my hearts done. The only other thing I did on my ribbons is here on the ends. I did cut them at an angle. That's up to you if you want to cut them, dovetail, angle, or leave them straight. But I think that looks so cute. And now we're going to put everything together. So you'll need some jute cord. I went ahead and tied a loop at one end so I can hook it. And then I'm just going to tie on all of my little adornments here. I'm gonna start with the ribbon and then I'm gonna do a heart and then another ribbon and heart. And then at the end, I will end with a ribbon. Now I'm gonna tie these on tight enough so that they hold but not so tight that I can't slide them. That way it'll make it much easier when I go to store it. I can just slide them all together, wrap the twine, and put it away. I have all my ribbon and my hearts attached and I did one ribbon, one heart, and then another ribbon. And they all slide back and forth on the jute cord. Now I haven't cut the other end. Once I go downstairs and I measure how long I need it, I will cut it then and tie another loop at the other end so that I can hang it. Then once I get it up, I can slide my items so that they're evenly distributed. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's Valentine's Day Garland Craft. You're going to need one of the wood heart cutouts from Dollar Tree. And then to start, just take a ruler and we're gonna go ahead and mark out our stripes. I like to start in the center so I get the angle that I want. And I'm just gonna do the width of this ruler. Now on my stripes, I'm going to go ahead and paint the base the color of the roses that I'm going to be placing, just in case you can see through or I don't get them in tight enough. And the colors that I'm using are white, red, and pink. I 
Okay, so it doesn't have to be perfect because remember we are going to be covering it. This is just in case anything shows through. Okay, so go ahead. I'm going to do white, pink, red, white. I got my paint down. It's not perfect, but like I said, that's okay because we're going to be putting roses over the top. I used uh, Apple Barrel, just white acrylic paint, and then the pink parfait, and cardinal crimson. Okay, you're going to want to let that completely dry. To make the heart stand up, I'm going to put a kickstand on the back. So uh, what I'm going to use is one of the wood rulers that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. And you're going to need one of these utility knives that you can also pick up from Dollar Tree. And you want it to be about seven inches in length. So I'm just going to use the ruler's markings and another ruler to keep my blade straight. And then you just want to go ahead and score it. So lay it down, go over it a couple times. Okay, so you can see I have it nice and scored all the way around. Then you just want to hold it close to that and wiggle it back and forth until it snaps. Okay? Then you want to go ahead and use some sandpaper and smooth out the end that you cut. Okay, so I have my paint all dry and I'm happy with it. Now, I'm not worried that the lines are not real clean. Uh, if you are unable to find any of the small roses, now I'm going to be using these little velvet roses. I found these at the 99 cent store. They come 25 count to a bag, and I have one bag of red, I have one bag of pink, and one bag of white, which I'm hoping will be, be sufficient to fully fill those. Now, Dollar Tree this year also carried these little like felt uh, roses, but they were larger. You can use those. If you can't find anything like that, when you paint, go ahead and use some painter's tape. You can also get this at Dollar Tree so that you get nice clean lines. And then you can just leave it painted like this and finish it off by using one of Crafter Square's wood words. They have several to choose from. There's hope, home, hello. They also have love and some other things. Or you can always use one of the galvanized words. They have love, XOXO, and Valentine. And if you put Valentine right across the whitest part, that will even fit. So those are some other options that you can finish off this heart in case you're unable to find anything like this to use. I opened up all my package of the flowers. Now before I start to attach anything on this side, I'm going to go ahead and attach the kickstand. So I have my piece of ruler that was cut at 7 inches. Now my cut is not real flat and straight, so you want to use the natural cut on the ruler as your bottom piece. And then you're also going to need a piece of sturdy ribbon. You can use whatever you have. I'm going to be using some of the burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. And what we're going to do is use the ribbon for the kickstand. Okay, so we're going to glue part of it onto the kickstand and the other part onto the board. Somewhat like this. And then you'll be able to move it. So go ahead and cut a piece that's about five inches in length. Okay, so you want to get a good amount of ribbon glued onto the back. 
And don't burn yourself because the glue will come through any kind of burlap ribbon. I always use a 100% silicone tool. These work really well and if glue gets on it, it just wipes right off. They're really nice. You can get these in the kitchen section in Dollar Tree. Okay, and then you want to bend that over and lay it flat. And then you want to find your placing. Okay. And then go ahead and glue it down to the heart. You want to make sure that you glue high enough that it's stable, but not so high that you can't move the back, okay? One more ribbon we need to attach is on the bottom here so that you can control how far that comes out so it stays stable. So I have a piece of this really pretty uh, red and white check. This came out of the Valentine's Day section. It's about six and a half inches long. I glue part of it on this end. This is going to help stabilize the kickstand. So just play with it until it becomes stable. Okay, once that's dry, and you don't have to worry about it gluing together, go ahead and turn it over and then we're gonna go ahead and attach the roses. Now you don't have to worry about crowding them too close together because underneath it's the same color. You want to make sure that they're able to be full and open on their own. I got the heart completely covered and it took every single little rose I had. And these roses measure anywhere from an inch to an inch and a half in size in case you're looking for something that's similar. So this is what it looks like standing up. I think it is so cute. I think I'm going to add a bow up here on the side. So I've gone ahead and pulled out some of my ribbon. I have this white laced ribbon. I wanted it to pull out some of the white. Now all of these ribbons I picked up from Dollar Tree and then the gingham. And then this one says, I picked you with hearts. And then this one is a red background with pink and white hearts on it. You want to go ahead and cut your ribbon at six inches. And you'll want to cut uh, two pieces of ribbon. I only had enough of this ribbon for one, so that's fine. But I have two of the others. So I've picked four different kinds of ribbon. And this is what I call my messy bow. I've really been into these lately. So just take your first piece to the center and then crisscross. You want to make sure you're pinching in the middle. And then just work through and lay down 
one of each and then start over. in the middle and you're going to need a small piece of floral wire take that and wrap that right around the center I always like to fold things over so I can get a good grip and adjust and pinch right at the base and twist. You need to make sure it's nice and secure so they don't come apart. And that's my little messy bow. Once you've gotten that twisted down where you're happy, go ahead and remove the excess wire. Just leave a little bit there and then just fold that down a little piece of wire. You're also going to need a package of the DIY stickers. I like these. I use them all the time. Now they have a couple different packs. Um, I like this one that has the little arrow through the heart. And I always take the stickers off because on paper they work fine, but on projects they don't stick that well. Now it's up to you. You can choose the pink heart. You can choose the white unfinished heart. But I, always, I like to put that on top and place it right in the middle. Yep, I think I'm going to go with the unfinished one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and glue that right on top. Okay, then I'm going to glue this right into the middle of my bow. And I want to place my bow kind of right up here in the corner and a little bit of an angle. And there you go. Isn't that adorable? Something very pretty to sit on a side table or maybe your mantle. I have a quick Valentine's Day hack for you today. I found uh, this sign at Dollar Tree. I thought it was really cute. I like the fact that it says love. I like the greenery, but I want this to look a little bit more Valentine's. So the first thing I'm going to do to the sign is I have a red Sharpie and on, on the L, the V and the E, I'm going to go in where it's white and color that in with red. The Sharpie works really well and will make quick work of it. Now see how quick and easy that is and how nice that looks. Got all my letters filled in. I think that looks really good. Then next you want to work here on your little wreath. It's all laid down and all going in the same direction. So just go over and pull it against the direction it's laying down. You want to try to fluff that out a little bit. So it doesn't look so squished down and compact. Fluffing that a little bit. You're also going to need a package of these really cute little toothpicks that have hearts on the end. I found these at Dollar Tree. Now I pulled out three in the red and three in the pink. 
So to take them off the skewer, all you got to do is grab it and then um, you kind of go in circles and pull it out because all you want is the little heart. And I'm going to add these to my wreath here. Now I'm going to put a little bow right here at the top. So I'm going to keep that in mind as I place my little hearts here. Just put a little dab of hot glue and place your heart. Doesn't that look cute? I absolutely love it. Now I found this really pretty red and white ribbon at Dollar Tree in their Valentine's Day section. And this is 5 eighths of an inch by 3 yards. Now I did go ahead and make just a simple little bow. And I'm going to attach that right up here at the top. And then you'll need one more red heart, which you're going to glue right over the center. And there you go. Doesn't that look absolutely adorable? Now with just a few small additions to this sign, it brought it up to the next level. For this project, you'll need one package of these terracotta pots that you can get at Dollar Tree. These are the small ones. Uh, they come in a set of three. You're also going to need some white paint. I'm gonna be using the Apple Barrel Matte Acrylic Paint in white. I really like the Crafter Square Tear Off Palette. You get 15 sheets. Open it up. You can lay your paint on it. The paper is waxed. It's nice and thick and your paint doesn't seep through to the next one. So it makes quick work for cleanup. If you put too much paint out, it's really easy. You just use your paintbrush to lift it up and you can put it back into your bottle. So I really like these. So on our pots, we're going to paint the bottom part of the pot white. Depending on your paint, it'll take one to two coats. Now terracotta is very absorbent, so you'll need to put a good amount of paint on because the pot will definitely absorb the liquid and moisture out of your paint, so it'll dry rather quickly. Just like that. I'm gonna get the rest of my pots painted and then I'll be back. You're going to need two of the 12 inch Crafter Square wood dowels. If you can find them in six inch, then you need three. And what I've done is I'm just cutting it in half. And I'm just using my wire cutters. So just press down, turn, press down, turn, press down. Do that a few times. And then you can just simply bend it and it will break and then you need three one for each of the pots we're going to paint these and i'm going to be using apple barrels nutmeg brown now the cut end is the end you're going to stick in the pot so you can hold it at that end because you don't have to do it all the way down to paint just get your paint on there 
Okay, so just get a nice coat of paint there on your dowel rod. And let that dry. You're going to need some burlap trim. I picked this up in the floral garden section at Dollar Tree. I really like this. They have three different ones to choose from. I'm going to be using this bottom one. Now, if you can't find burlap trim like this in your Dollar Tree, you can always use just jute cord. We're going to be wrapping it right around the brim here. So if you're using jute cord, you just want to wrap it around, I'd say probably four or five times. Just glue down the end, wrap it around, and then five times, and then glue down the end again. But I'm going to be using this burlap trim. And I'm going to place it right here underneath the rim. And I'm going to hot glue that on. I think that adds the perfect touch to your pot. I'm going to add this to my other two pots. I got my trim on and I still have some left so one package is plenty. Now I have this one large piece of floral foam that I got at Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut this down to fit inside these. And what I found is a paint scraper works really well. You just push it down and it gives you a nice clean cut. Now you don't have to fill it completely. You just need enough in there that will hold the dowel rod. So that is sufficient. I will fill the rest of my pots. You also need one package of the heart grapevines. You get five in a package, you will only need three. Now we're going to decorate our little hearts. And for that, uh, you're going to need some greenery. I'm going to be using this one. It's called a fall grass, but I picked it out because it had the little pink blooms on there. This is called Gypso. It just has the little white beads on there. And then this one is called Baby's Breath in red. Now you only need one bloom of the Baby's Breath per part. And then just a couple small snips of each of the other two. So I'm going to start with the, this one right here. I think that's really pretty. You just need to decide which side you're going to start on. I'm going to start on this side. And so I want to put this in the background. I want one that's a little bit longer to go up and then one that's a little shorter to come down. I don't want it to come past the base here. I like that one for the top. Okay, so once you get your placement of where you want them, just add a little bit of hot glue. So I have one piece coming up and one piece coming down. I'm going to place my little red flower right in the center.
And then I'm going to take just a little piece of the gypso and put one on the top and one on the bottom and I'm going to alternate what side. There, so the stem goes underneath the flower. And then the other one I'll place going down, but on the opposite side. So I have this one facing out and this one facing in. Doesn't that look pretty? Very sweet. Okay, now with your dowel rod, the end that you cut, that's the end that's going to go inside the pot. So you're going to glue your heart at the top. Get some hot glue there. Then you want to place that right at the base of your heart. Just kind of get it in there and place it however best that you can. And then you need to hold it so it's nice and straight until that glue sets up. want to turn it over and add some more glue to the back. You want to make sure that's nice and secure. Once you have your heart glued on, you want to go ahead and place that in your pot. Wherever you glued your little decorative twine there, you want to make sure that's in the back. Place it right in the center and push it all the way down. I'm going to fill the bottom here with some white decorative rock that I picked up from Dollar Tree. The rock looks really pretty and finishes off the bottom, plus it also adds weight so that they don't tip over. going to need some Valentine's Day ribbon. I picked this up this year in the Valentine's Day section. This is nine feet by five eighths of an inch. It has a burlap background with a pretty red glittery heart on it. You'll want to cut three pieces at nine and a half inches. You'll also need three pieces of some floral wire. I like to use the silver because that just disappears. You can't really see it when you use it. And you only need a couple inches. Now we're going to make a simple bow. So how I do my simple bows, I find the center, pinch, and then I make a loop and bring the end in like that. And then I take the other side and do the same thing, bring a loop in. You just want to make sure that your loops and your tails are the same size. Okay, then you flip it over. You want to make sure that the tail, that the right size side is showing for your tails. Okay. Then you're just going to pinch it there in the center and wrap it with floral wire. it over makes it easier for me to get a good grip because right here at the base you want to really squeeze that together so that it scrunches and then twist have just your basic simple little bow. If you get any fraying or anything like that, just trim it off. And then on these, I'm going to do a small dovetail. Just simply pinch it. 
and then trim at an angle. And you can also trim off your excess wire. And then I just push that end down so it's flat. You can just lay it on the table and push. One little piece. So that's what your little bow should look like. And then I'm going to glue this right there in the center. And when I do that, I line them up so I can adjust them. And this too, you can also adjust the height. Make sure they're all approximately the same height. You line them up, it makes it easier that you get your bows and everything at the same height. And there you go. We are all done. I think they came out absolutely adorable. These are perfect to display on your mantel, a side table, or even your kitchen island. You're going to need one of these wood cutout hearts from Dollar Tree. Uh, these are new this year. They come slatted. Now they have them either horizontal like this one, or you can find them vertically. For this heart, we're going to use the uh, horizontal slats. And then I'm going to use this really pretty decorative paper that I found. Now on the, the background looks almost like wood grain. And then on top it has all kinds of wording in an off white. Love, forever, hugs, kisses, smile. Not sure if the camera can pick that up. But I found this in this uh, paper pad that I picked up from Craft Smart at Michael's. And it is a romantic garden, and it shows it right here on the front cover. Now, I'll have the name of this in the description box below. Now, these papers are 12 by 12, which is what you need for this size of a heart. It just fits on the paper. Now, other options for paper, decorative paper, uh, Hobby Lobby usually has four for a dollar. You can also look at uh, gift bags, wrapping paper, or anything along those lines that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and turn it over, get your heart placed, and then trace it out. Okay. That way I can go ahead and cut it out. I'll cut out the main part of the heart first and then I'll cut it out in the slat. I have all my pieces cut out. Now these part of the slats that show really show up. So I want to uh, soften that so it doesn't stand out that much. So I'm going to paint these little spaces with some Burnt Umber paint by Apple Barrel. Okay, 
Okay, I got all the little slots painted the dark brown. Now I'm going to use some Mod Podge. Now if you're using a thick paper that comes out of a paper pad, it doesn't matter what finish you use because you only have to put it on the, the bottom. If you're using thin paper like wrapping paper or tissue paper, napkins, anything along those lines, then you're going to need to put it on top and then you'll want to choose your finish. Uh, Mod Podge, you can either do the, the gloss, which is what this is, or they also have a matte finish. Okay, so I'm going to start on the bottom and just put some in a cup here. Now you just want to get a nice, thick, even coat. Get everything fully covered and then work on getting it nice and even. Make sure the edges have a good amount so that they seal properly. And then just press down and work out any air bubbles. Clean up any excess. And there you go. So I'm going to attach the rest of my paper. I have all my paper attached and I'm really happy with how it's looking so far. Next thing you're going to need is some of the lace ribbon that you can get from Dollar Tree. And this is a three yards or nine feet. I think this is really pretty. Now you're going to want to cut a piece that's slightly larger. And I'm going to go ahead and place my lace right here. I'm going to do the same thing here and here. Just going to use some hot glue. Just lay down a small amount at a time, do maybe an inch or two. And then lay down your lace. You want to be cautious because the hot glue is going to go through that lace. But to get that straight so that you don't over pull it. Just put it down a little bit at a time. Okay, so I got my lace on. Now on the ends here, you just kind of want to wrap it around and glue it down on the back. When you get down here, just fold it over. And glue it down. If you need to, you can trim off any excess after you get some glued down. reason why I like to wrap it around and glue it is because sometimes this lace has a tendency to start fraying and if you wrap it around rather than cutting it, then you don't have that problem. Okay, so I have all that lace down and I have all the ends nice and tucked. Now I picked up this ribbon from Walmart and it was $4.74. This is four inches by three yards. It's a decorative lace. Now I cut a piece that's about uh, 14 and a half, 15 inches in length. I'm going to make a bow out of this. I'm going to fold it in half so I can find the center. And I'm going to bring the side over. It needs to come at least half an inch past the center so it doesn't come apart. 
same thing on the other side and turn it over and you're going to want to go ahead and scrunch it right up the center so it looks like a little bow tie and then you're going to take some floral wire take a piece that's a couple inches long wrap it around that center pull it to the back and tighten it down. That looks like that. And you can go ahead and trim off any excess wire. Okay, so I got my bow done. I want to place my bow kind of right up here with a slight angle. I decided that I wanted to add a little bit to it, so I made a little twine bow. I have three loops on either side, and I'm going to stack that right on top. And then I found this really cute little button that I have left over. I had picked this up at uh, Walmart, and I'm going to put that right into the middle. So I think that will look really cute like that. Doesn't that look pretty? I picked this up in uh, the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. So I'm going to go ahead and remove everything off. And then I want to paint this uh, khaki color. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, remove the tags, and get it painted. Okay, so I had some of these uh, wood DIY stickers that you can get from Dollar Tree left over. Uh, I pulled out one large one and two of the smaller plain ones. And you will want to paint these the same way that you paint the word love. Now I'm letting the love word dry. I'm going to go ahead and put the hanger back on. Um, I didn't punch the holes through because I don't want holes in the front. So I'm just going to hot glue this to the back. And use the same hanger that came with it. You want to let the glue fully set up. So my love sign is dry. Now it was a little darker than I wanted, so I'm taking a little bit of white paint, just a very tiny amount, dabbing it onto a dry brush, and then just lightly going over my love so that I can make it a little lighter and a little bit more creamy looking. Plus it adds more texture to the word. Get it around the edges a little bit more. Let's see. I think that looks much better. I'm going to go ahead and put the love sign right about here. Just like that. And I'm just going to go ahead and hot glue it down. And there you go. Isn't that beautiful? And the finishing piece is to go ahead and to glue on your little wood hearts. I've chosen to put one up here, one here, and then I'm going to place my other one here. I'm just going to use hot glue. And there you go. She's all done. I think she's absolutely gorgeous. I'm really happy with how she turned out. I wanted to do something neutral for Valentine's Day. For our next project, 
You're going to need four of the crates and two of the boxes. You're also going to need some wood glue and then some clamps. I really like these that I got from Dollar Tree. They have two sizes. This is the large one. They also have small ones. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the two boxes and attach them end to end. If you get any glue that seeps out, just go ahead and wipe that off to keep it clean. It will dry clear, so you don't need to worry about that. We're going to do the same with the crates and glue them end to end in pairs. You want to let your glue fully set up before you move to the next phase. Now that all three sets of my boxes are dry, you want to take the two boxes, turn them upside down, and then we're going to take two of the crates and glue them on top. Now the crates are a little smaller than the boxes. You want to make sure to line up your center and to make them flush with the front. So that'll leave a little extra lip here in the back, which is fine. So we're going to glue the top on like this and then this one we're going to glue in the front again line it up with that center line so that they're going to be stacked like that now to do this so i can move forward quickly i'm going to use the wood glue and a little bit of hot glue Then I'm just going to add a few little daubs here and there of the hot glue. This is just to help hold it in place until the wood glue sets up. Now I have a little bit of a space here between the back boxes and the front crates. I'm going to fill this in with some hot glue to make sure that that stays flush. So I ran a bead twice back and forth, make sure that's nice and secure and there's no gap there. You're also going to need two uh, pieces of the craft wood that you can get at Dollar Tree. These are both 18 inches long. You just want to make sure that they're pretty much the same length and they are almost two inches in width. And there, I'd say that's maybe a quarter to half an inch thick. So these we're going to attach here onto the back on each corner. This is going to hold our sign. I'm going to mount one on each side, flush with the corner. Just like that. 
Again, I'm going to use a combination of the wood glue and the hot glue. If you get any glue coming out, just wipe it up. It will dry clear. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Our structure is complete except for our sign. You want to let your glue fully set up before we paint our project. To paint the project, I'm going to be using Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch 2 times Ultra Coverage in white flat. I really like this paint. It usually covers really well and it dries rather quickly. So once my glue sets up, I will take it outside and give it probably two good coats of the white paint. Okay, so I got my base on. Everything is nice and white. Now I want to add a little bit of color. And I'm going to be using the Parfait Pink from Apple Barrel. And I'm just going to do every other stripe here pink. So it'll be pink, white, pink, white, pink, white. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get my stripes painted pink. I have the pink stripes done and all of the paint is dry. You're also going to need a package of the Valentine DIY wood stickers. You will need two Kiss Me and two hearts with the Cupid. I've painted my wood stickers. The Cupid is pink and the heart is white. The Kiss Me is painted in just the pink. You will also need some wood hearts. These I got in the wood DIY stickers. I have several left over in the pink. I will be using two large and four small. Here is the sign that I've chosen to use. I was so happy when I found it in Dollar Tree. You'll want to remove any stickers from the back and also remove the hanger. To cover the holes, I will be using these adorable heart toothpicks, two of them in gold. To remove the heart, simply grab it and twist the stick until it releases the heart. Add a small amount of glue and place your hearts. Doesn't that look adorable? Now we're going to attach our sign and I will be doing that using a combination of the wood glue and hot glue. The clamps will help it hold in place until the glue fully sets up. Now we're going to attach the rest of our DIY stickers using a combination of the wood glue and hot glue.
I've placed all of the DIY stickers and I'm really happy with the result. The crates that I used do have some openings and I don't want those there because I don't want the filler that I'm going to use to come out. Take a piece of white paper and cut it to the size and fold it so that it will fit inside each of the crates. You will need four. Now we're going to add some decorative shreds to help fill in the crates and add color. One bag will be sufficient to fill four of the crates. For the two bottom crates here, I'm going to fill them with Hershey Kisses. I picked up four bags, they're three ounces each, of Hershey Kisses. You will need two bags plus filler for each box. To fill the top two boxes, I found these adorable sugar cookies at Dollar Tree. I was able to find three different designs. The kissing booth can be used as a gift and filled with sweet treats. You can also use it in your coffee bar or hot cocoa bar. And there you go, we are all done. I think it came out absolutely adorable. I am very pleased with the finished product. I can't tell you enough how much I enjoy using the DIY stickers from Dollar Tree. To get started on today's craft, you're going to need one of these wood signs that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. Now they carry them throughout the year for several different holidays and seasons. This one is about 18 inches in length. You do uh, want to get one preferably that's white. If it's not white, that's okay. You can paint it white. It needs to be white except for the very front here. We're going to paint that a really pretty soft baby pink. You can use whatever light pink color you have. This one is Folk Art Multi-Surface Satin 2940 Baby Pink. Before you paint though, you want to sand down your surface. Just use a sand block or some sandpaper and go over it. You want to remove any rough edges. If your piece has any stickers or anything on the back, you want to remove that. Sandpaper can also help you remove any of that leftover sticky residue. While our wood base dries, we're going to move on. You'll also need one of these tinsel love signs that I found this year at Dollar Tree. And the first thing that you need to do is go ahead and remove all of the tinsel off of the sign. We won't be using any of that. And you just need to find an end and then they wrap back and forth. I have all the tinsel off. And I just have the frame now. And now we want to separate each of the letters. Just use your wire cutters to snip through the plastic. Now 
Now you need to remove this little bit of plastic that's in between the O and the V, as well as between the V and the E, this section and this section. As you can see, I removed that extra bit of plastic, but I did not damage the shape of the letter. Try not to um, damage the frame around the letter itself. You just want to remove that extra piece of plastic. We are going to be rewrapping these in another material. I have all of my letters separated and I was able to keep the integrity of each of the letters. You're also going to need some chenille chunky yarn or any other chunky yarn that you would like to use. I picked this up from Walmart. I believe it was like six or seven dollars for this, so not too bad. And I have one here that's left over from a previous project, so I'm gonna start with that. And now you just want to cover each of these letters with the white yarn. Start in the back. Just attach it with some hot glue. Just be cautious not to burn yourself. You want to wrap each letter until they are completely covered. You don't want to see that frame at all. So there at the top, when you're gluing the front and back, make sure to squeeze it together so you don't see the frame. Once you've got that attached, you can easily wrap it. And the little nubs that held on the tinsel will help you keep your yarn in place. Get each of your letters wrapped in the white chunky yarn. All of my letters are nicely wrapped. They look good actually on both sides. And my piece of wood is dry. I got my nice light pink color there. And then I left it white elsewhere. And now we're going to attach our letters here to our base so that it'll help it stand up. And I'm going to be attaching them using a combination of Aileen's Original Tacky Glue and Hot Glue. Once the hot glue sets up, go ahead and turn it over and then go in and add some more hot glue anywhere where it looks like it needs more. You want to make sure that's nice and secure. I have my love attached to my base and it stands up on its own very nicely. 
Now I want to add a little something something to decorate. And I pulled out one of these really pretty uh, kind of glittery pink hearts. And these come in a package of two and they do come in pink or in red. You'll want to remove the little top here. Just grab at the base and pull. They do come right out. And I want to put this guy right in the middle of my O here and I want it at a slight angle just like that and I'm just going to tack that in with some hot glue a couple little dots on either side just make sure you don't see that hot glue my heart fully glued in and I'm really happy with it. Now of course you can decorate this further if you would like but I'm going to keep it simple. I think this is really pretty and it's going to look great sitting up on my mantle. Now to help decorate that I have one of these uh, little metal envelopes that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. They come in pink, red, and galvanized. And then I pulled out another stem of my beautiful small mini roses, again in the pink. Now I went in and I cut a couple of the stems so that they're nice and short. And I also cut two of the longer ferns that also come there on the stem. These are going to be my background. Then I'm just going to fill up my little envelope here. I really like that. I think it's very pretty and I like those color tones. So when I have this up on my mantle, I can also have this next to it and I think that is going to look really cute. And along with that, I'm also going to display it with one of the little gnomes. I think the three of these together will look very cute on my mantle. For our next DIY project, you will need a wood heart. You can choose either the larger one or the smaller one. This smaller one comes from the Crafter Square section, and the larger one here comes out of the Valentine's Day section. Today I will be using the smaller one of the two. I pulled out this glitter drape out of my Christmas stash to use in the project today. Traditionally, you would use cotton batting that you can pick up at any fabric store. You can also find it in any large craft store like Joann's, Michael's, or Hobby Lobby. Fold down or cut your cotton batting to a size just a little bit larger than the wood heart that you've decided to use. Glue the wood heart to the cotton batting to make it easier for you to cut it out. Trim out the heart, leaving approximately a fourth of an inch. Okay, so I have my cotton batting cut out. And I did leave it just a little bit larger than my heart shaped here. Now because I'm using something that's multiple layers, I've just gone in and added a little bit of hot glue to kind of keep it together while I work on it. Now this is the fabric that I've chosen to cover it. I think it's very pretty. It's just a really light, um, small floral print with different colors of pink and green.
Now I did iron out my fabric because uh, it did have wrinkles in it and I don't want the wrinkles. So again, you want to lay your heart down and just roughly trace it out so that you can go back and cut it out. And when you cut it out again, you want to leave a good inch to an inch and a half of extra space. And now we're going to wrap our heart. Down here at the point, you want to cut straight up from the bottom to up to where the point is. That will help you wrap it. And then same thing here at the dip. Trim right down to the dip. So we're going to attach it now and the best thing to do to get started is to start at the widest part of your heart. You just want to put down a little bit of hot glue and get those sides pinned down. Now if you have too much fabric, you want to trim that. So here on the point, you end up having too much fabric. So you want to trim that a little bit on both sides. So look and see how pretty that is looking. Now don't worry if you have a lot of excess fabric, you can trim that off once you get it all tacked down. And just do a small section at a time, it'll be a lot easier for you. Now right here where you cut the split, you need to add just a teeny bit of hot glue there so that your fabric does not fray. Once you have everything tacked down, you can remove any excess fabric. I think the heart looks really cute and it's nice and padded. Very, very pretty. Everything excess has been trimmed off. Now if you have any areas where um, it's not smooth around and it looks like you need to tuck, just go in, add a teeny bit of hot glue and then push over and pull and that'll tack it down and smooth out that area. But I'm really happy with that so far. You're also going to need some of the heart ribbon lace that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. 
This is over in the Valentine's Day section and I think this is very pretty. Very pretty white lace and it has these little hearts all the way around. And yes, we are going to trim out our heart here with the lace. And I'm going to start right here at the top. And I'm going to attach it here to the back. Again, you need to be careful. The hot glue will come through the lace, so be cautious. And slowly work your way around your heart. I have my lace trim on and I'm very happy with the result. And you can see I just hot glued it all the way around the edge. Now if the back here bothers you and you want it to look finished, you can cover it either with a piece of white felt, you can cover it with brown paper, or you can put another uh, wood heart over the back and that'll cover everything up. If you wanted to hang this, you can add a hanger. This would also look really cute on a wreath as a wreath attachment. The last thing I'm going to add to it is this galvanized word that says love. I think that's very pretty and I really like the galvanized because it really stands out on the background. And I'm going to be attaching that just using the Aileen's Original Tacky Glue. I'm also going to hit just a couple drops of hot glue to make sure it stays in place until the other glue sets up. I'm really happy with that. I think it looks so pretty, very sweet, dainty, perfect for Valentine's Day. Aren't these little pails absolutely adorable? They come in a package of three in the Valentine's Day section. They did have a few different patterns to choose from. Remove the little wire hanger from each of your tin pails. Add a small amount of floral foam to the bottom of each pail. You will also need some heart picks. I grabbed these from my stash, but Dollar Tree does carry them. I believe they come in a package of six. The two larger hearts I will be using as they are. I put together this third pick for the center pail. To make the center pick, you'll want to remove the pick by rotating until it becomes loose. Once it's loose, place it back inside and then twist as you slowly push through to the other side. Then you can add it below the smaller red heart. Do the same thing to the second smaller red heart and place it underneath the pink. Decide the heights that you want each of your topiaries and trim the picks as needed. Place a pick in the center of each of the pails. To finish off the bottom, you can add decorative rock, sand, or moss. 
Today I'm going to be using this decorative white rock. My heart topiaries are perfect for my mantle. They also would look absolutely adorable down the center of your table. To get started, you will need a large wood cutout heart that you can get in the Valentine's Day section at Dollar Tree. You also need one of the wood laser cutout words, love. You get two in a package. We'll also need some deep red and white paint. The white paint is for the heart and the red is for the word love. You'll want to paint the top half portion of the heart in white. Get a good coat of red paint on the word love. It should take one to two coats depending on the type of paint you're using. The paint is dry on our heart now. To cover the bottom of our heart, I have some of the Crafter Square paper vinyl in this pretty red and white check. This is the smaller version that you can get. I will need to cut a second piece to cover the bottom portion of the heart. Trace out your heart. Then trim, leaving a good inch of extra space. Peel off and place your first piece of vinyl, making sure you have enough to wrap on either side. Once you're happy with your placement, turn it over and make small cuts about every inch. Fold over one piece at a time to get a nice smooth fit. Take a second piece of vinyl and overlap the first row so that the pattern stays the same. Trim and tuck your vinyl. I found this really pretty cut out heart ribbon at Dollar Tree. I'm going to use it to trim out my vinyl. Make sure to measure out your ribbon a little longer than you need so you can wrap the ends around the edge of the heart. Tack down your ribbon with little dots of hot glue. Replace the jute cord hanger. Now it's time to get our love attached. Decide where you would like to place it. Then attach it with a combo of Aileen's original tacky glue and dots of hot glue. I also love how these wood icons that came in a multi-pack from Dollar Tree have different sizes and colors. 
Figure out where you would like to place them and glue them down. You will need three different 5 8 of an inch ribbon in Valentine's. I pulled out this beautiful red and white check. I also pulled out this burlap base and it says I picked you in red. And this really pretty heart ribbon. You will need to cut three pieces of each ribbon at six inches. I have all my ribbon cut. You will also need a piece of floral wire. We're going to be making my messy bow. Just lay out and stack the ribbon in a crisscross manner. Pinch in the middle and secure with floral wire. Pull the wire to the back and twist down. Trim any excess wire and then tuck your ends. Here's what your messy bow should look like. We're going to place it right here. Just add a small amount of hot glue and place your bow. For the final touch, I'm going to be using one of the toothpick hearts. It comes in a bag at Dollar Tree. Remove the pick and then simply glue the small heart to the center of your bow. And here you go, we are all done. I absolutely love the Valentine's Day sign. You're going to need a package of these wooden hearts. They come two to a pack and on a wire. They're just called decor pieces. They do have some different colors. It doesn't matter which ones that you get because we will be painting them. You're also going to need some white paint. I'm going to be using Apple Barrel Acrylic White. And you're going to need some sandpaper. Okay, so just go ahead and remove the wire. Then you're going to want to take your sandpaper and go ahead and sand smooth off any of the glitter or wording that's on either of these. So I have everything uh, sandpapered off. It's nice and smooth. Now you're also going to need two of these hearts and they come in a package that looks like this from Crafter Square. There are two hearts, two stars, and two flowers I believe in the package. These hearts were the perfect size. Then you're going to take your paint and you're going to want to paint one side completely white. So on this one, since the back is already white, I don't need to paint this. We're going to cover this side with paper. So same thing with the small ones. Go ahead and paint one side white. And then this one, I'm going to paint the back white so that everything looks cohesive from the back. 
Okay, while the hearts are drying, I'm going to prepare my containers. I'm going to be using these. I picked them up from Dollar Tree. I really like them. This is the taller one. They also have a shorter, more squatty one. If you can't find these in your store, you can use whatever type of container. In the Valentine's Day section, they also sell little tin buckets. Those would be really cute. You could use those instead. So all I'm going to do is I have one of the little square styrofoam floral foams from Dollar Tree. I went ahead and cut that in half. My little scraper paint spatula works really well. You just push it right through and it cuts it right in half, no problem. So I'm just going to take that and stick that down inside the base. And that is what I'm going to stick my flowers in and my dowel rod. You're going to need two dowel rods. And these are the long ones from Dollar Tree from the Crafter Square section. You're just going to need two, one for each container. You're also going to need a couple packages of the wood DIY stickers from Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using these two large pink hearts. I'm going to use them the color that they are so I don't need to paint them. Uh, they also come with a plain large heart. You can use this. They're the same size if you want to uh, paint it or maybe you've already used these and you have these left. You can paint it or you can um, put paper over it, whatever you would like, but this is the size that you're going to want. And you'll need two. You're also going to need some decorative paper. Now I've chosen these two sheets that I picked out of this Craft Smart paper pad that I picked up from Michaels. This is Spring Posies Bouquets. But you can use any decorative paper that you have. Hobby Lobby has them for for a dollar. So you can go that route. You can also use wrapping paper. You can use paper bags. Anything along those lines can be used as well. If you do not want to use um, decorative paper, you can always just paint your pieces. Now for my large hearts, I'm going to use this paper. So all you wanna do is go ahead and place your heart on the back and trace it. You will need two and then cut them out. And this pattern is the one I've chosen for my small hearts. And again, I've traced two of those, and now I'm going to cut those out. Okay, so my hearts are dry. Now I've painted it white on one side. The other side is still the wood side, and that is the side I'm going to attach my paper to. So the white will be the back. Okay? Same thing with the large one. The painted side that's white will be the back, and then we're going to cover the front. And to do that, I'm just going to be using Mod Podge. This one happens to be the gloss. You can use whichever finish you prefer, either the gloss or the matte. So you just want to get an even coat of Mod Podge down and then place your paper. This paper that I'm using from the paper pads is really nice paper. It's thick, so it goes on nice and easy. If you're using thinner paper, you need to be a little bit more careful because you could uh, tear or rip. And if you are using really thin paper, like wrapping paper, you're definitely going to want to put Mod Podge over the top as well. And go ahead and line up your paper and get it placed, you will have a second or two to adjust your paper. And you just want to go ahead and press that, make sure you get all the air bubbles out. Get it nice and clean all the way around, press the edges down. And then you want to set that aside and let that dry. 
So I'm going to go ahead and attach the paper to my hearts. Okay, so I have my paper on my hearts. Now I'm cleaning up the edge with some uh, sandpaper. And all you want to do is go ahead and drag down and away, all the way around. This will give you a nice clean line. It'll also make it look slightly weathered around the edges. Once you get it down this way, if you need to remove more paper, just go ahead and go back and forth like this. And that'll give you nice clean edges. So you want to go ahead and do that all the way around all of your hearts. So on this heart, the smaller of the two, we're going to go ahead and place the pink heart in the middle. Now these normally come with a sticker on the back. I removed that. We're just going to add some hot glue and attach it that way. That looks like that. And then in our container, I cut the block in half. I put one piece in the bottom and the second piece I'm going to shove in the top here. Set that aside. Then you're going to need a dowel rod. We're going to put this one right at the very top. To do that, I'm going to use some of the craft glue and some hot glue. Okay, you're going to want to let that fully set up. We're going to attach the large heart the same way. I'm going to lay down some craft glue first. Do a strip right down the middle. and then add hot glue to either side. Now you're going to want to let that glue fully set up before we move forward. Okay, so I have my two hearts attached. They are nice and secure. And my container is ready. I'm just going to go ahead and place this right into the center. And put it in as far as you want. We're going to place flowers around the base. Now I'm going to be using these. I picked these up at Walmart. I found them on clearance for 25 cents. But you can use any florals that you want. You just want to stay in your uh, color scheme. And I am pink and white and green. So all I'm going to do is at the very base here where they come together, I'm 
I'm going to clip off each stem. That way I can choose exactly where I want to place them. And if I need to cut them shorter, I can. I also like to push them, all the greenery and the foliage and everything that comes with it, closer to the top so that they're thicker. And so all I'm going to do is go ahead and fill it in around the base. I don't want to see the green foam. So I'm going to go ahead and place these in. Okay, so I got all my flowers in and I have my two hearts in. I did go ahead and add a pink bow and one of the heart-shaped gems that you can get at Dollar Tree. The ribbon I used actually came out of the Easter section. It's just this really pretty light pink ribbon, five-eighths of an inch. Well, I'm really happy how my topiaries came out. I think they are so pretty. They're going to look gorgeous on my mantle. Over in the Crafter Square section, I picked up this really cute little photo frame. Now they had several different shapes to choose from, but because I wanted to make something for Valentine's, I picked the heart. You wanna go ahead and bend the little prongs in the back and remove the center. We're going to paint this. You're gonna need some red paint. Today I'm going to use the Folk Art Lipstick Red. And then you're also going to need some brown paint. And for that, I'm going to be using Apple Barrels Nutmeg Brown. I'm going to be painting the heart red and the base here brown. I really do like this Crafter Square Tear Off Palette. It works great when you're painting. Nothing to clean up. The paper is nice and thick so it doesn't uh, seep through to the next one. So it makes clean work of painting. Depending on what paint you use, you'll need to put one to two coats. I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to get the base painted brown. Now while our base dries, you're also going to need a package of these new uh, DIY stickers. They're the wood stickers you do it yourself. And this has Kiss Me and then it has a heart with a little cupid. You will need one of each of those for this project. The Kiss Me, you want to paint the red, the lipstick red, or whatever red you're using. And then the heart with the Cupid, you want to paint the Cupid white and the heart around the same red. And for the white, I'm just using my favorite Apple Barrel white paint. My pieces are dry, so we're going to move forward. You'll need a piece of uh, brown paper. You can use construction paper or cardstock, whatever you have. You're going to use the little uh, insert that came in the photo frame. Just trace that out and cut a piece out. We're still going to use this to help support the paper. Go ahead and place that back in. So it should look like that. Next, we're gonna take the Kiss Me and we're going to place that right in the center. And I'm just going to add a few dots of hot glue and place that. Doesn't that look cute? And then with this ribbon that I picked up from Dollar Tree, 
This is nine feet by five eighths of an inch. It has a burlap background and it's really cute. It says, I picked you. I made a very simple bow. I'm going to place this right here on the bottom. Doesn't that look cute? I absolutely love it. Now, if you don't get the word straight, remember it's on paper. You can just loosen and adjust until you get them so that they look straight. And on this piece, it's really nice because the bottom right here is flat. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to glue him right in the front here. I think that looks really cute but I'm not quite done yet I have one of these crafter square metallic markers in white and I'm gonna go in and put a little bit of stitching at least make it look like stitching all the way around the heart and then here on the kiss me I think I'm gonna go in and add some polka dots in white I'm just going to freehand and do whatever looks right to me. This is a handmade craft, so it does not have to be perfect. Now Dollar Tree has several different types of markers. The only one that has a fine tip is this one and it's the metallic markers. They have a white one that is a chalk marker that has a very wide tip so it's difficult to do any kind of detailed work with it. They have another one that is a paint marker but it as well has a very large tip. So you want to keep your eyes open for a white crafter square metallic marker. These things are great. But see how cute that is just by doing that. It needs it needed some white. So now I'm just going to go in and add some white polka dots on my kiss me wherever I feel that they need it. Because again, I feel like it needs a little bit more white up here at the top to tie in with the cherub. Or Cupid, I should say. I think that looks really cute. I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to go over those polka dots again to make sure that they're nice and white. And there you go. We're all done. I think it came out absolutely adorable. And for about $3, you got a really fun and easy craft. You're going to need four of these heart plaques that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need one of these small DIY heart stickers and a dowel rod that's been cut at about five and a half inches. Now we're going to go ahead and stain these. We're going to use just a little bit of burnt umber paint and some water. Just add a small amount of paint and water it down. You just need to mix it really well. That should be very liquidy. And then you're going to go ahead and stain each of these pieces. And it's simple. Just go ahead and brush it on. You get it nice and covered. And then wipe off any excess. I really like it. That way you can see the wood stain. And it goes really quickly.
If it doesn't come out dark enough for you, you can go ahead and apply a second coat and do it again. I have everything stained. Go ahead and set that aside. We're going to let that dry. Then you're going to need the letters that spell love, L-O-V-E. We're going to be painting these a dark red. For the red, I have Cardinal Crimson. And this is too bright for what I'm looking for, so I'm going to add just a very small amount of pavement. And just a little bit of water. You just want to make sure that you mix it well. Once you have it the color that you want, then you just go ahead and give it a good one to two coats of paint. You want to get good coverage. Nice, pretty dark red. Okay, once you have your letters painted, and you want to go back to your hearts and right here around the edge where it's beveled in you want to paint that the same color red so when you mix your color you want to make sure that you mix enough and it doesn't have to be perfect but you just really want to get some of that red color onto the plaque like that okay okay so while everything is drying we're gonna go ahead and make our bow so you just want to pick about five different kinds of ribbon this is all small like uh, five eighths of an inch all of this I picked up from Dollar Tree so I have the lace ribbon I have this one that says, I picked you. This came out of the Valentine's Day section. And I have some plain uh, burlap. And then I have some uh, gingham. This came out of the Valentine's Day ribbon. And then I have this really pretty S-shaped red ribbon. This was actually in the Christmas section. Then you're going to want to take each of those and you want to cut two pieces at about six to six and a half inches in length. You're going to need a piece of floral wire about three to four inches. I have all my pieces and this is going to be what I call a messy bow. Okay, so we're just going to put one down, put another one down another one down and then go again yes Okay, so you layer them all on like that and then you're going to take that floral wire and you're going to wrap it right around that center. Pull all those pieces forward so you can get a nice tight grip. Then you want to pinch really tight and secure that by twisting. Okay. 
And then there you go. You have a really cute little messy bow. All of the paint is dry. I did go ahead and glue down all of my letters. And I used the craft glue. I wanted it to set up overnight, so I glued it down last night and it's been sitting. I also took another one of the DIY stickers, this little heart uh, with the arrow through it, and glued that on top of the wood heart that I stained. You're going to need a piece of jute cord and some of the lace burlap ribbon that you can get at Dollar Tree. We're going to put it all together now. So go ahead and lay out your ribbon. And start at the bottom here. And I want to see a little bit of the ribbon down here. And I went ahead and cut a dovetail. Up here, I'm going to have the dowel rod and I'm going to wrap the ribbon around it. So I need to leave myself an extra space before I cut the ribbon. So then I'm going to fold that end of the ribbon over by about a half an inch, fold it down. Then I'm going to fold it again by about three fourths of an inch. Okay, so that's where the dowel rod's going to go, just like that. And then I'm going to hot glue this side down. So right on that folded area, just add a little bit of hot glue. You don't need a lot. And then fold it down. Okay, once that dries, you can go back and make sure that's fully attached. And this is how you're going to hang it, so you need to make sure that that is well secured. Okay. Okay, that's nice and glued down. It's secure. But because these are so heavy, I want to make sure that that doesn't come apart on me. So I've cut two pieces of the floral wire that you can get from Dollar Tree, just a couple inches, and I'm going to use that. I'm going to pierce it through the ribbon underneath, and then I'm going to pull it up into the back, and then give it a twist. I want to make sure that ribbon doesn't come unglued. If it does, then I have the wire there to keep it secure. So I'm going to do that here on this side and on this side just to make sure. Once I've got it twisted down, then I'm going to remove the extra wire. Okay, so the wire has secured the ribbon. And then I went ahead and uh, tied the jute cord onto the dowel rod and I also hit it with some hot glue and then wrapped it around a couple times on both sides so that that's secure. That is how we're going to hang it. So next we're going to go ahead and if you want to add some distressing to your wood, 
you want to go ahead and add a little sanding around the edges. You can go ahead and do that if you want to distress it. If you don't, you don't have to. I'm just going to do it a little bit just to kind of soften it. Then I'm going to place down my letters and get them where I want them. This ribbon is nice because it does have a line that goes right up the center so it helps you to make sure that you get those wood pieces centered. And I'm just eyeing it. I want to leave a little space up here because this is where I'm going to attach my bow. Okay. So once you have them placed, then you can go ahead and glue them down with some hot glue. Start with a little bit and then uh, you can turn it over once you get them down and add more. Just be cautious because it is ribbon not to glue it to your surface. That's why I start with a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get these glued down. Once you have them initially glued down, go ahead and turn it over and then add some more hot glue around the edges. Make sure that it's fully secure. I use this tool. It's a Betty Crocker scraper spatula. You can get it in the kitchen section at Dollar Tree. This works really well when you're hot gluing, especially uh, like burlap ribbon because the glue goes right through it. So you don't want to burn yourself. If glue gets on it, once it dries, it just wipes right off. Really nice tool. Okay, I've got that attached. Now I want to attach my bow. I think that came out so cute. I'm going to attach it right here in the middle where the dowel rod is. Okay, and then right in the middle of that, I'm going to place this little heart. I think that is the perfect touch to finish it off. And there's the finishing touch. I think that looks so pretty and really sets off the rest of the sign. get started in today's project you're going to need one of these wood hanging decor pieces now they have two sizes I believe this is the smaller one this is 3 inches by 12 inches you will also need one package of each of the galvanized letters that you can get in the crafter square section the first package is A through M and the second package is N through Z you need one package of each so that you can spell the word, word love. So two letters come out of each package. You will also need some white paint. 
and a lighter shade and darker shade of gray. I'm going to be using uh, Apple Barrel White, Apple Barrel Granite Gray, and then Folk Art Medium Gray. Now for this type of painting, I really do like this type of brush. It is an old brush. It has some dried uh, paint in there and stuff, but it makes the edge really rough. So it's perfect for any type of dry or distress type painting. So I'm going to start here in my white and get some on my paintbrush. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this jute cord so I don't get paint all over it. I can easily put in uh, some more jute cord or something else to hang it later. So decide which side you want is your front. And then I'm going to start with the white paint. And I'm just going to quickly start brushing over it. I want this to look very kind of distressed. I don't want a really thick coat of white paint down. So if I don't get it completely covered, that's fine. I'm going to go over it with the lighter gray and the darker gray. And you can still see some of the wood showing through, which is exactly what I want. Now I'm going to move into the lighter gray. Just tap in a little bit, tap off any excess, and just start by going lightly over it. And then you can blend. Now remember, if you get this too dark or you don't like the way that it looks, you can easily go back through with your base color and lighten it up. And I don't want a whole lot of this. I do want to darken up the edge a little bit all the way around. So it always looks much better when you kind of just layer in the colors. So a little bit of this, blend that, a little bit of the other. And I just kind of go back and forth until I get the look that I'm going for. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to let this dry a little bit before I go in with the dark. And with the dark, I'm just going to go right around the edge. I'm not going to do anything on the interior. While I'm letting my board dry, I'm going to paint my little letters here. So I pulled out L-O-V-E in my galvanized letters. And I want to give these a coat of white paint because I want them to really stand out on their background. Now for galvanized uh, items, I find the best way is to use the pouncing brush, at least for your first coat. It's one of those surfaces that uh, paint doesn't really like to stick to. So I just pounce over it up and down. You may need to go over it more than once. Just get a good coat on there and then move on, let it dry. And if you need to, you can put a second coat on. My board is dry, so now I'm going to move on to the next step. I move to a smaller brush. Now this bristle is very uh, stiff, which will help. You want to use a dry brush. Go and tap in just a little bit of the dark gray. And then I'm just going to go around the edges, kind of tap a little bit. I just want to add a little bit of darkness right around the edge. I'm going to do this all the way around. Just 
So you can do as much or as little of this as you would like. But I'm really liking that. I like that it kind of brings out the shape of the board. Once you have it the way you like it, go ahead and set that aside. My board is all nice and dry. I'm really happy with that. Now I'm going to be using this punch that I picked up at Michael's. This punches a heart that is two and three eighths inch in diameter. I got this from Michael's with one of their coupons. This is from the Recollections collection. I did pick this up a couple years ago. So I went through my decorative paper and pulled out uh, a couple different patterns that I liked and punched a heart out. So I have these four hearts that I'm going to be using. And these are the perfect size for this board as they fit perfectly. So just first figure out exactly your placement, where you want to place your hearts. Of course, you can always hand cut out your hearts. Now I have said in the past, and I will say again, I really do love working with paper pads because they have lots of different patterns and all the patterns go together. So when you do something like this, if you pull everything from the same book, they all flow and go together. So I really like that placement. So that's where I am going to be placing my heart. And I'm just going to be using a glue stick. This one is Avery. I did pick this up from the Dollar Tree. I like working with glue sticks when I'm trying to glue down paper. It's not real wet like Mod Podge, so you have less of a chance of having uh, wrinkles and things like that. And I just like to eye my pieces. They are handmade. And also with working with the glue stick, you can adjust it a little bit before it fully sets. have all my hearts glued down. I think they look really pretty. And I pulled out these three different kinds of ribbon that I picked up from Dollar Tree. They are all five eighths of an inch. I pulled out their lace ribbon that they have. Uh, this is rustic farmhouse ribbon. I thought that was really pretty. And this one is a gross grain. And it's a really pretty sage color and it pulls the good colors out of my heart. You will want to cut two pieces of each ribbon at three and a half inches in length and then you'll need a piece of white pipe cleaner. Now we're going to make what I call my messy bow. So just lay your first piece down your next one and I just cross them as I layer them. Just like that. Go ahead and pinch it in the center. And wrap your pipe cleaner. I always like to pull everything to the front so I can get a good grip. Pinch right at the base there and give a nice twist. Make sure everything's nice and secure. Then just adjust your ribbon. You'll also want to trim your pipe cleaner once you get it secured. 
And to get that flat, I just lay it down and then press with my thumb. Okay, so I have my messy bow done, but before I put that on, I want to put my hanger on. And I've decided I'm going to use some floral wire, and I really like the silver because you can use it on anything. You want to cut a piece that's about 8 inches in length. And pick one end and feed it through from the front to the back. Then I'm going to bend this over twice so that it won't pull back through. See how I bent the end over a couple times? And then I'm also going to hot glue that down. just add your hot glue make sure that's facing in the direction you want and let that set up once your glue has set up you can go ahead and start stringing your beads now I got a large bag of beads off of Amazon that had a thousand different beads in it and they have several different sizes so I went and pulled out like the three smallest sizes and I'm just going to start feeding that onto my wire here. And I'm not going to pay attention. I'm just going to mix the three sizes. I think that will look very interesting. And just continue to feed on the beads. I really like that all the different sizes and not a specific pattern so I'll feed that down till I get about an inch and a half left and then I will feed it through the front again like I did and glue it on the back just like I did this side I got my hanger on I think it looks absolutely adorable and it's nice and secure also by putting the hot glue on that you're not going to get any scratching from the wire now I'm going to place my bow right in the middle there. I have a package of these really cute little toothpicks that have hearts on the top. I've been using them quite a bit this year in my projects. I have one here that's gold. So to take that off, all you have to do is grab the heart and then take the toothpick and just kind of twist back and forth until it releases. Twist and it comes right out. I'm going to place this right in the middle to hide my pipe cleaner. Doesn't that look adorable? So the last thing I'm going to do is add in my letters and I'm going to put one in each of the hearts. I'm just going to be using Aileen's Tacky Original Glue to attach them. I like this glue. It is nice and tacky so things Kind of hold their place while it dries. And I'm just going to eye my letters and get them down. There you go, I got all my letters down. 
I think it looks absolutely adorable. I love the shabby chic feel of this love sign. I hope you found today's 16 Valentine's DIYs inspiring and have you thinking of Valentine's Day crafting. Thanks so much for stopping by. It's always a pleasure to see you. If you enjoy craft tutorials and hauls, you're going to want to check out these other videos. Have a great day. Take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next video.